What's up guys, it's Poir and the build is finally here. After working on a failed Yokai Shift build due to just Yokai Shift being meh for what I wanted and the enormous grind it took to test and try things out and get the right cores and yada 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 only for it to fail, I said screw it, let me start the next project and here it is, the Grappler, my first Tonfa build. This is probably the best all around build in the game. I don't know. It's got like little to no weaknesses at all. As you saw, all those endgame bosses crumbled before the might of my two little sticks. It's got great tankiness with 3000 defense and the most lifesteal in the game due to Tanfa's blistering attack speed. You can break enemies key in seconds with one to two mid stand combos or in combination with the Spirit Core Gozuki, which leads to you dealing a brutal blow for the one-shot kill. 
This is hands down the best Tonfa build there is, for sure. And like I said, it's probably the best all around build in general. Well, besides bow I guess, but that doesn't really do good against humans, whereas this smashes them. Anyways, enough tooting of horns, the build is the full Mercedes Benz, plus 3 piece Tyra for 30% more grapple damage. And lastly, Poison Snake Helm for, well, more poison damage. This allows you to kill Winds of Ruin with or without Yokai Shift. However, it can still one shot Ruins with Level Sync on, with its mighty demon form, if you choose to, which is something most other builds would struggle with, at least at the speed that I'm killing, which is around 2 minutes. I went with Ben Zaiten set because it's the biggest damage booster in the game, but more importantly, Tonfa can stack its stacks super fast. There's 9 stacks total, with the 9th giving a 60% damage boost. Even at just 3 stacks, this set beats Inari 7 piece because Ben's is multiplicative damage, while Inari is additive. So for most builds, even if you don't intend to go full stacks most of the time, Ben's set will beat Inari. The exception though is if you rely on only one or two less skills, like my Blender or Snowman builds for example. Now because versatility is the main juice giver, this means the build is more complex to play than my usual builds, as you have to flow through several attacks to stack, and then on top of that, you gotta time when you gain a stack, as when it reaches 9, the buff will no longer refresh and then fade out and then you'll have to start from 1 again. Each other stack lasts about 30 to 45 seconds however, so plenty of time to pick and choose your skills to prolong it for the final moment. For weapon, here's the stats you want, and no star effect needed. However, you do want to put anima on the weapon, which to do is you soul match a corrupted weapon with a core that has an inheritable, and then max the fam on that corrupted weapon to then transfer that inheritable to your tonfa. Do note, the inheritable must be a white inheritable, so be careful of that before you start soul matching. Key damage and grapple damage are the most important, and then either courage or constitution attack bonus A. An accumulation effect is good for certain bosses for a more reliable debuff proc, and lastly, remodel the weapon to double A scaling. The second weapon is Tyra's 2 cats, which, if you really really wanted to, you can turn this build into a 2 cat grapple build, using God of Wind as your main key damage skill. Up to you. Range weapons, double bends, with the main having agility A, which speaking of graces, you can only forge or find Grace gear. You cannot temper it nor change what's already on a gear piece. So the strat to get these pieces is to save scum when forging, to avoid losing a ton of mats and divine fragments. I'll explain the save scumming method in an upcoming video this week. And now armor. Yes. All my gear has star stats. These act just like graces. You find them or you forge them, except they're also rare as hell to boot. So to get these, you do the exact same thing you do for graces. You safe scum them. Oh yeah! It takes about 1 out of 10 crafts to get one on average, and then there's RNG of which star effect you get, and it's even possible to get two or more star effects at the same time. However, I won't bother doing that for my build videos, as that's, that's, that's too hardcore. I'm not gonna do that. But all these star effects took about an hour or two to get in total. So. Not that bad, given the boost. The Snake Helm is for poison damage for ruins, or in general, human fights. Medium Armor can roll key damage, which is the main stat you want on all your medium armor. So say you had a build with all medium armor. That's almost a 30% key damage total, just from those stats. I chose Veteran Chest and Waste for damage reduction when attacking, which is always active, which makes the build much tankier. Is the best generic medium armor you want graces on, in my opinion. You want Tyra on gloves and boots to weigh as less as possible, so you don't have to dump too many stamina points. For Tyra though, since it's heavy, you can only get skill damage and not key damage. So get that, active skill damage, which also affects grapple damage. It doesn't need to be a star though, so you can temper it if you don't feel like grinding. And lastly for the other substats, just get Untouched Nijitsu, attack, and jutsu power, and, most importantly, life recovery on your chest piece, and the rest is up to you. 
And lastly, accessories, again, star effects. This time for melee versus zero key, which affects my grapple damage, so it's a must for most scenarios. That's a 40% boost from star effects. The way to get these is by Sudama rerolling. I'll explain that in a video the next couple days as well, to save time here. But zero key is a must have, and you can roll melee versus X as well. Poison is best for the build for Ruin Farm, otherwise you can have your choice. Magatama is one of the few accessories to get life recovery and rid absorption, so it is the best in slot as second to Yasa. For stats, I settled with these. I needed more ninjutsu to land elements on some bosses, so I went with 60. As you can see, 63 wasted points on stamina. But that's kind of needed to be B agility, so again, make sure to follow my armor setup to weigh as much as me, so you don't have to dump any more points into stamina than you need to. For the rest of the points though, go into heart, and the 50 magic is just for the longer duration of buffs. Spirits, taper, finally becomes relevant. It gives 20% key damage, and well, that's about it, but good enough for me. Secondary is that bad girl, Ho, giving you 4% high stance damage, but also, as you saw, the destroyer of ruins, as it gives luck, which makes divine gear drop more, it has lots of attunement, so you can fit a lot of good cores, and Brute Form has the strongest grapple. Phantom has the weakest, so you want Brute for max damage, and Ho is the new Tengen, usability-wise. Cores, Gauze is the key damage king. It obliterates key, however, you gotta time it right. Otherwise, Yokai will auto-change realms and recover key after a certain short threshold, so be careful of when you use him. Kiryoki is simply for skill damage, and it also makes my purity last a little bit longer. And New Peppo is the new queen for damage buff as she stacks with Carnage, unlike Yamamba. You can use both, but you will find it harder getting both of them off at the right moment. So just go Kiryoki or Namahagane, as that gives more damage for melee versus zero key. However, I kind of burnt out on rerolling because you got to reroll these cores as well. So I settled for the useless monkey. Since you must get anima generation on your cores. The more often you can use gauze, the more easier your life will be. I did some testing and anima bonus unscathed Amrita is the most potent at raising your anima for melee, beating accumulative damage and even Amrita absorption anima bonus. It does come at the condition at needing to be full life, but with the amount of life still that you have, you will be max HP most of the time. For hose cores, the stats don't really matter outside of attack, yokai shift, the snake gives a boost for poison enemies, yams gives grapple damage, and since the paralyzed state is not zero key, magatsu or kiryoki or enki are your best third options. And lastly, make sure to change the cores color alignments to the respective spirits, which you do need mortal cores to do, which drop from humans. Clan, Tyra, ironically, is best in slot in my opinion, for any key damage build as it auto weaknesses the target before the grapple, boosting the grapple damage and giving you more kill speed since you don't need weakness talisman or the purge tally. Speaking of grapples though, grapples also remove the cursed effect from enemies for a short time, making them easier to deal with. So honestly, grappling is top tier meta right now, especially after this video. Now for the hard part, skills. Uh, let's just say your choice. You want all three pulverized and the rest is up to you. Just make sure you have nine skills to activate max stacked versatility. Burst counters and grapples will also add one to those stacks, but you can't guarantee them in all scenarios. So I decided on this combination and you can copy if you will. I like anima gen on mid stance demon dance and key damage on mid heavenly chain for the custom skills. Kanagi Mystic is a must have as you can basically cancel any long skills animation so you can go stack to stack every second. Do note, mid stance normal attacks have hyper armor so you generally want to use them to lead into heavenly chain and pulverize also has hyper armor as well so overall for a skillful player you're actually gonna love this build. Ninjutsu! You want para and poison traps for ruin farming or humans in general and then your choice of feathers. Feathers are to apply confusion, which amplifies your damage, so you want it in Dream of the Demon, because otherwise your damage sucks. And feathers make the most sense over magic because of zero key, dealing some decent damage. 
You can use Blister Beetle powers if you want, but as you saw, if you want to do Ruin Farm on top of everything else, you're gonna need four item slots, which you can set up in the settings, but basically, you ain't got no more room, bro, so minimize it to your liking. Omnio, Purity Talisman, is OP against Yokai. I get Barrier for more Key Recovery and Arch Yokai for more Anima. Carnage for damage. I also do Impurity Transfer, although to be honest, I think I won't end up using it like in my Calamity clip, since we auto weakness anyways, and Sloth makes fights with Carnage, well, easy. Sloth OP, use it. If anything, for the sake of kill speed, as you can just go more ham for more longer. It's both offensive and defensive. You're a fool not to use it in Demon if you think it's simply a crutch for noobs. It's actually pretty powerful, so do it. I basically get three for each Calamity boss. And that wraps up the Grappler. I hope this long wait of not having a build video has paid off now and that you guys enjoyed this video. The next build will be Hatchets, since they got buffed from patch 1.12 and I kind of want to play with them. As I said earlier, I'll make a video with Dream of the Demon tips to help you guys out or to make you aware of some findings me and my Discord have found. If you want to discuss Neo or Revenant trade, join my Discord in the video description below. We're friendly, mostly. <laughs> I will stream Thursday, Mortal Shell is releasing on the 18th, which I also will stream, so follow my Twitch at Project War Twitch Thingy, blah blah blah. And yeah, enjoy the build and grapple that like button and comment Whatever, and subscribe for more Neo 2 Epicness. Don't wait, show that you're not